Here we're going to be looking at how we would record bad debt expense. Now we're going to have some accounts receivable here on a balance sheet and we're going to have sales here that we have on our income statement. Now all these accounts receivable here uh, will not be able to be collected so we're going to have some bad debt expense against these accounts receivable, the uncollectible amount here. And we have two different methods here to determine that bad debt expense. It's either through a percentage of accounts receivable or a percentage of sales here on the income statement. And we're going to be using the allowance method in this case. And these accounts receivable, they're going to be reduced through a allowance or a doubtful account here as a contra account here, the accounts receivable. And then our bad debt expense, that's also going to be a, a contra account here to our sales account. So the first thing let's do is go over and define what we're talking about here. So we have our accounts receivable, and that's the probability, and we're going to be looking at the probability of collection based on estimates of either the percentage of sales or the percentage of receivables. And we're going to start here with the percentage of sales. So for the percentage of sales, that's the income statement approach here. And that uses the allowance for doubtful accounts. That's that valuation account, which is a contra asset account here. And it subtracts or reduces the accounts or the accounts or trades receivable here on the balance sheet here. And then we're going to be using this allowance method. And, the, and an, that's an estimate is made of the expected uncollectible accounts from one, either all the sales made on account or from two here, the total outstanding receivables. And we'll start here by looking at the all sales made on this account here. And then expanding here on this allowance method, you record the expense on an estimated basis in the accounting period in which the sales on account occur. And that's to properly match the expenses and the revenues. And that determines the proper carrying value of the accounts receivable, which is the argument for using the allowance method. So let's go over and first look at our example here. So we're going to have some bad debt based on net sales in this case. So, And that's the percentage of sales here that if, based on the income statement approach here. And for our example here, the bad debt estimated is going to be 1% here of the net sales. So go, let's go look at our example. Yeah, we're going to be given some financial information here before any adjustments are made. So we have, in this case, accounts receivable here, uh, sitting here, are debited for $80,000. And then we're going to have some sales here, a uh, credit amount here for $400,000. And then we're going to have some re sales returns and allowances for the period here uh, at $25,000. And that's a contra account here to the sales. That reduces our sales here. And the other thing we're given here is the allowance for doubtful accounts. Uh, we have $1,000 that's sitting in it here. And we're going to be using this uh, percentage of sales uh, calculation here. So what we're going to do is we're going to be find out that for our calculations this thousand dollars that's currently sitting here in this allowance account is going to be ignored. So let's go and look at our calculations. It's easy enough to make. First we would take the uh, for our net sales here. We had four hundred thousand dollars in sales over here and then we have sales returns and allowances of $25,000. So subtracting those two, you take them times the 1% here, that bad debt estimated here at 1% of net sales, that amount equals $3,750. So we would go up here and we decrease our allowance for doubtful accounts here by $3,750. Now remember that's a contra account here to accounts receivable and it reduces the accounts receivable. And then the other thing is uh, for our credit amount here of a, for our allowance account of uh, $3,750, we go and we recognize that here as a bad debt expense here on the income statement. So we debit our bad debt expense here for $3,750. Now remember our bad debt expense here is a contra account to our sales account. It reduces the sales here for the period. So just to summarize what we've done here, the amount of the bad debt expense and the related credit to the allowance accounts are unaffected by any balance currently existing that in that allowance accounts because the bad debt expense estimates or is related to a nominal account that is the sales account and that nominal account is sitting here on the income statement and any balance 
in the allowance account is ignored when making this calculation and expensing this for these uh, bad debt expense here. Now remember the nominal account here on the income statement is closed at the end of the period to the retained earnings on the balance sheet. So what we're just to review here uh, with this percentage of sales here we're just taking a per, based on a percentage of sales which is the income statement approach here because and then we're uh, base, uh, basing our uh, bad debt expense here on the percentage of sales and we re reduce our accounts receivable through this allowance account here and the whatever is sitting before we make our calculations here anything that is sitting here currently in this allowance account is ignored when we're making our calculations here for our, our bad debt expense based on net sales in this case so now let's go on and we're going to look at the uh, the percentage of receivables based on the percentage of receivables here for estimating this bad debt expense. Now let's look at our bad debt expense here based on a percentage of receivables here and we're going to have the same uh, financial information here as we had for the percentage of sales here. We're going to have some accounts receivable and we're going to have sales here. Now I have to note here all these for this example here you have to assume that all the sales here are on credit and that's for both for the percentage of sales that we looked at and then for the percentage of receivables and we're going to calculate our bad debt expense here based on the percentage of accounts receivable here. So first let's go and uh, uh, define what we're talking about here. We're going to have our accounts receivable and that's the probability of its collection based on estimates here and we're going to be using the percentage of receivables here and that percentage of receivables that's the balance sheet approach here. So we estimate the percentage of outstanding receivables that will become uncollectible without in this case identifying specific accounts here. And again we're going to be using the allowance method here and we're going to be looking at the total outstanding receivables here. So let's go down and look at our example here. We're going to have bad debt estimated here at 5% of accounts receivable and then the bad debt is based on the outstanding receivables in this case and that's again the percentage of receivables here on the balance sheet. So let's go up and look at our example here. We're going to be given here $80,000 for our accounts receivable here and then we're going to have sales of again $400,000 here dollars, and then we're going to have some re sales returns and allowances here and then we're going to have to estimate our bad debt expense here which would reduce our sales. So let's go and then we have our allowance for doubtful accounts here that a contra account that reduces our accounts receivable here and there's a thousand dollars sitting here in this uh, allowance, allowance account here before we go in and we make our calculation. So in this case we're not going to ignore this one thousand dollars. So we have a two-step process here. First we have to uh, determine the amount here that we want in this allowance account based on the percentage here of accounts receivable. So number one, first step here, we have to determine the desired balance in the allowance account here. And we would take $80,000, that's the amount here of our accounts receivable, take that here times 5%, that gives us a desired balance that we want in our allowance account here of $4,000. So what we want here is $4,000 and we have the $1,000, so the difference here would be the $3,000. So let's go look at our calculation here. And uh, okay, the step two here, what is required to bring the allowance account to the desired balance here of $4,000. That's what we want here, the $4,000 that we uh, based on the uh, accounts receivable that are the 5% accounts receivable that aren't collected. So we take uh, the $4,000 amount here that we desired amount less the $1,000 that's sitting in here and it gives us $3,000 that we have to add to our allowance account here. So we take the $3,000 here credit to, to the allowance account which is a contra account to accounts receivable or reduces our accounts receivable and we our debit amount here we go to our bad debt expense here for $3,000. And again remember our bad debt expense here is a contra account to our sales which reduces our sales account here. So just to summarize here the estimate of the receivables or the realizable value cannot be ignored here. Uh, the You cannot ignore the balance in the allowance account when calculating and expensing here. And what I mean is you can't ignore the balance that's sitting here before you make your calculation. So if you have any balance existing here it has to be included to determine the desired amount that you need in this allowance account. And that's because the percentage is related to a real account and that's accounts receivable and that's 
uh, reports the receivables in the balance sheet at the net realizable value here. That's the amount to be received in cash. And then again, remember this real account here of accounts receivable, that's on the balance sheet, and that's close to the cash account on the balance sheet at the end of the period. So let's just go up here and look again, re review what we've done here. We just take this a percentage of our accounts receivable here, and we determine what our bad debt expense would be based on what we can't collect here in our accounts receivable. And then we had this $1,000 sitting here in our allowance account, and that has to be included in our total amount here that we want for our allowance here. So we had the $1,000 balance when we needed a $4,000, we had a $1,000 sitting here and we needed a $4,000 balance here based on the um, amount, a percentage of uh, accounts receivable that wouldn't be collected. So we calculated it to be $3,000 here, the difference between the $4,000 and $1,000. And then that's recognized here as bad debt expense. So just to review here, uh, to summarize, summary for estimating and recording our bad debt expense, what we're doing is we're evaluating our accounts receivable receivable, accounts receivable valuation, and we're looking at the probability of its collection based on estimates either as a percentage here of sales on the income statement, that's the income statement approach, or to the percentage of receivables on the balance sheet. So that's a summary here on how we would handle our bad debt expense here based on either a percentage of accounts receivable here on the balance sheet or a percentage of sales here on the income statement. Two different approaches, but uh, for the uh, first approach here, percentage of sales, we did not include this $1,000 in our estimated, but for the percentage of receivables here, we had to include it here. For the percentage of receivables, we're looking for the realizable amount here. So we would take our allowance account here uh, is a contra account here to our accounts receivable and just take here we had say eighty thousand our accounts receivable subtract out the four thousand uh, dollar doubtful amount here our allowance account and we would have seventy six thousand dollars and that's what we would be realizing here as the amount of cash received <laughs>